So from last day, we have seen that we can collect device in two different ways. Either we put some resistor or light bar in series, which looks like this. So we can collect something in series in a circuit. That means we line them up one by one. Like a resistor here, maybe another resistor here, and a third resistor down below. So now what's special about collecting things in series is that the electron only has one pathway to go. So being an electron, being that data free guy for the pizza hut that we use as examples, right? They only have one way to go. So they have to go to all three of those resistors and drop everything that they are carrying, drop all the energy that they're carrying, right? Now, but that's not the only way we can actually put items together though. We can also collect light bulbs or uh, resistors in that case in this setup called a parallel setup. Now, the good thing about this is imagine what happened if these were like light bulb, right? So instead of resistor, they are light bulb. So if one of the light bulb is burned out, it won't affect the entire circuit. Only that one light bulb will be burned out. On the other hand, if you look at the picture on the right, when you have the series circuit, if one of the light bulb burns out in there, the entire string of lights actually turned off because now you have a gap that the electron cannot cross anymore, right? So if one of the light bulb burns out, every single light bulb turned off. Uh, funny thing, you know, back in the day when we have like crystal lights, crystal lights, they, well, in the old day, crystal lights are actually collected in series. So if one out of the 500 light bulb burns out, the entire string of light actually turns off and you don't know which one actually burned out usually because they look exactly the same, burning out or not, right? The little light bulbs in the crystal light. And well, nowadays we usually have crystal light where the light bulbs are collected in parallel. So in parallel, that means electron can go through, for example, the first loop like this. So some electron did it for energy this way. Some electron did it for energy walking the second route. Right? So they go around the second row. And some electron choose to walk around the outside and deliver energy to the last light bulb out there. So now what happened when one of the light bulb turns off or you know it's burned, something happened to it, or you broke it, is that well that path would not have any energy, but the electron can still go to the other two, right? Without actually uh, affecting the other one. So there there is actually an advantage to collect something in parallel. Now, but it's more complicated and it costs more money to do that. As you can see, you have to use more wiring for collecting something in parallel, right? So more wiring. So that's more expensive. And, you know, sometimes it's cost prohibitive to actually do that. So still, we have things collected in series sometimes. Now, but unfortunately, because we do have these two very different ways of collecting a circuit, uh, the manner in which we collect those components greatly affect the circuit itself. Especially, it affects the total overall resistance. So total overall resistance of the circuit. Now, in order to actually analyze those situations, we have to use two laws called the Kirchhoff law. So there are two laws in here. One of them is called the current law which is also nicknamed Junction's Law. Now you understand why it's called Junction's in just a moment. So Junction's Law. All right. Now, so for a series, so let's just begin with a series. So for a circuit collected in series, which we're going to draw one right here. And so this time let's draw the battery on top, uh, a cell on top, and maybe put two resistor or three resistor let's put three resistor let's put one last one on the right so now we have three resistor right so we have resistor one resistor two and resistor three okay so what is the junction's law now if i'm going to draw the direction of current remember we're talking about you know conventional current which is the opposite direction of the electron flow so the current will be going this way so now, if we're going to measure current in a circuit, we put an ammeter, remember? An ammeter has to be put inside a circuit. So it has to be collected in CV. So let's say we put a couple of ammeters, uh, one right in front of R3, which is the one that we just drew, and one right in front of R2, 
and another one right in front of R A, R1, right? So one in front of R3, one in front of R2, and one in front of R1. So if we're going to measure the current, now remember what current really is, right? Current is the amount of, technically speaking, the amount of electron going through a circuit per second, amount in terms of Coulomb, right? Coulombs of electron per second. Remember what the electron does. They are actually just their free guy for the energy, which come out from the battery. So the total number of current should not be changing in a series circuit. So what should we should write down is the total current is the same as current you will measure in location one, which is when it goes through resistor one. And it should also be the same as when the current goes through location two, which is right before resistor two. And it should also be the same when it goes through resistor three. So the same amount of electrons should go through resistor one, two, and three, because their job is to deliver energy for you, their numbers do not go down, right? So if I send out 10 amps of electron, let's say that's 10, you know, 10 delivery guy, I expect 10 of them to come back. And I also expect 10 of them to go through every single house, right? So if there's only one path, so let's look at this sentence. In a series circuit, there's only one path. So the current must be, well, it must be the same everywhere. So it must be the same. So see if we can squeeze that sentence in here. It must be the same everywhere. Okay. Oh, let's try to, you know, structure that better in the next, <laughs> in the next one. It's kind of squeezing in there. Now, so I1, I2, I3 should all be the same number. If the current coming out of the battery is 5M, then there should be 5M going through resistor 3, 5M going through resistor 1, and 5M going through resistor 2. 5 Coulomb per second, right? Now, so that's for the current, for series circuit, and now, of course, for parallel circuits, which is the other main type, right? So now we're going to have a resistor collected in parallel, okay? So resistor collected in parallel. So in a parallel circuit, the charges, which are the electrons, can take different paths. Therefore, the amount of charge electrons at any point, so let's let's change that sentence a little bit. So let's say the amount of, now let's cross that out. So, and then we write it down here. So the amount of current, okay, flowing through each pathway, so flowing through each pathway, must equal to the total. Okay, so what does that mean? So the pathway, so the current going through each pathway must equal to the total current. Okay, so the total current, so to, uh, total I, current is I, right? So total I. Now to understand that, we have to, well, let's, let's draw a little drawing. Now I know it's, it's gonna be like squeezing that a little bit in here, but um, let's let's do that. Now maybe do a small one in here. So try to draw like a little bit smaller on this one. And now, okay, so we have a resist, uh, we have a battery first, and then we're gonna have it collect to a resistor right here. And then maybe we'll just branch it off and collect to another resistor. And now we could even make it a little bit more complicated and having like three resistor. Okay, so the idea is you, the piece of heart, right? The battery. It's gonna send out some electron working for you. Now those electron you might send out. So let's say, for example, uh, we call it I total. So the total amount of electron that you send out. So let's just say you are sending out maybe five m of electron. So five group of electron, right, per second. Now, so what happened is that those electron are going to be traveling and they're gonna make a right turn at the corner, right? And then they're gonna be entering this junction. Now at that junction, what happened is they're gonna split up. So they're gonna split up. So like, how do they split up? Now exactly how much go in one direction or the other uh, is a topic that we will discuss in later on, a little bit later on. But now, so it's gonna be 5M 
when it's going through here, but then it's going to split up. So the way it's going to split up is, so let's say this is resistor 1, 2, and 3. So they have name, uh, resistor 1, resistor 2, resistor 3. So I'm just naming them so that we can also name the current, current 1, and current 2, and current 3. So the current going through the second one is current 2, and the current going through the third one is current 3. Okay, now, so what's going to happen is they're going to split up. So the 5 amp goes in. Now you see that junction point that I'm highlighting right now, that green dot. So the 5 amp goes in and they're going to split up. They're going to split up into, for example, now I'm just giving you an example. It doesn't have to be these numbers. Maybe 3 amp will go forward to the right and 2 amp will go down. See what I mean? They're going to split up by a certain amount. But they all end up to 5M because that's how much you have to begin with, right? So you send out five people and then they are now at a junction point. Some some of the people can go down and some of the people can go right. Well, there, there should be five people going in total if you add the two directions together, right? So what happened is there's going to be a split and let's say the split is 3M, 2M. And then you see another junction point and I'm going to try to... Uh, do that one in blue. So this blue junction point, look at that. So what happened is three groups of electron goes in and they're going to split again. Now, how do they split? Well, maybe, now they don't even have to split in, you know, whole number. As long as they split into 3M, I'm happy. So they will split into, for example, it could be um, 1M, maybe this way, and 2M continue to go forward. Okay, so 2M continue to go forward. Now, so what happened is they are going to join. So you see the path with the uh, 1M is going to continue to go down. So those one group of electron, that one group of electron go down. And the 2M will turn around and go through resistor 3. And they will meet back at this location. So they will meet back at this green point down below. And it's going to be, well, after they meet back with each other, it's going to be 3M again, right? So by the time they actually go back to this middle section in here, it's going to be 3M again. And those 3M is going to meet the 2M that's coming down from resistor 1. So therefore, at the end, I send out five groups of electron. I expect five groups of them to come back. Which, you know, we, when you think about electron as a um, you know, piece of delivery guy or lady, it makes sense. They, they have to add up and give me back the five people. They should come back. I send out five people. They come back. Okay. So now uh, let's write that down. Then, so what happened is that means if you actually take a look at the IA, IB, and I, well, sorry, I1, I2, and I3, I1 is 2M, I2 is 1M, I3 is 2M. If you add those three together, you will see exactly, yes, 5M, right? Which is exactly how much we send out to begin with. So in a parallel circuit, the current split up. So I total should equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. Now you can have more than three resistor. I mean, technically speaking, a Christmas tree nowadays has like thousands, well, not thousands, maybe hundreds of light bulbs on it, all collected in parallel, right? So each light bulb is taking exactly a little bit of the total current, right? They split it up. Now, Another way to, to think about a junction's law in here is, um, so if you have a junction, the sum of the current entering a junction, okay, the sum of the current entering junction must equal to, equal to the sum of current leaving it. Okay, so the sum of current entering your junction must equal to the sum of current leaving it. So that means it makes sense. There should not be any charge leave behind at a corner. So if five coulomb go, uh, five amp goes in, there should be five amp coming five amp of electrons coming out at some point. Okay. All right. So that's half our weapons. Okay, almost. So we are going to be looking at. 
the second uh, Kirchhoff's law, uh, and this one is going to be for voltage. Uh, so now for voltage, we have something different. So Kirchhoff's law stays that the sum of, okay, so the sum of potential different in a circuit. Well, now potential different is just a fancy term to say voltage. Remember, voltage is the pizza, right? It's the battery, is the energy that the electron carries. So the sum of the voltage in a circuit must add up to zero. So it must add up to zero. Okay, so adding up to zero. So why? Now remember, we we did it last day too, right? Remember our example with the Pizza Hut model. If I give you five pizza, which is five volts, and you carry it, you better deliver all those five volts to the customer and come back with nothing. So basically, Kirchhoff's law, simply put, is a electron will pick up a certain amount of voltage from the battery and it will deliver every single volt of that in the process. When the, when the electron come back, it should have zero volt. So the total amount of voltage that you pick up should equal to the total amount of voltage that you draw. So therefore, something like this, total voltage gain, which is usually in the battery, if you think about it, okay? So it's usually in the battery when you gain voltage, must equal to the total amount of voltage that you drop. Well, the total amount of pizza you take out from Pizza Hut should equal the total amount of pizza you deliver to the customers. And usually where do you drop it? You drop it in the resistor, the light bulb, the speaker, your cell phone. You drop those energy in the part of the circuit that uses energy. So this is Kirchhoff's voltage law, which is really easy to understand. Energy that you pick up to deliver equal to energy that you have to drop at some point. All right. Now, this is simply laws of conservation of energy, which we studied last unit. Right? It's simply laws of conservation of energy. Like you cannot destroy energy. You can deliver them to someone else so that they can use it to make light or sound. All right. Now, so when you, when a electron goes through the terminal of a cell, terminal is one side of the cell of a battery. So it can be top positive terminal or negative terminal. So when a electron goes through the terminal of a cell, there must be a, so it will gain voltage. So when the electron goes through the cell, it gains voltage, it gains energy. Now, but similarly, when the electron goes through a resistor, it lose voltage. Okay, so when you go through a resistor, you lose voltage. Now, if you count all the increases and decreases in voltage, well, they should add up to zero. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Now let's talk about a series circuit to begin with. Let's draw like a tiny series circuit and maybe have one, uh, maybe just have like two resistor or three resistor. Uh, so let's draw a resistor here, another resistor here. Okay, so should we put one more? We can, we can put one more. We can put one more in here. Okay, so let's draw three of them. Now, so very easy. So the idea is if I measure the voltage, now remember voltmeter has to be collected in parallel. So if I measure the voltage in here, this is gonna be measuring total voltage, right? The voltage coming out from the battery. Now I can put another voltmeter to here, and this is gonna measure, it's going to be measuring the voltage of resistor number one. Okay, and then I put another one in here, which measure the voltage of resistor number two, and put another one on the side, measure the voltage drop across resistor number three. So let's say they all have names. Resistor one, two, three. Okay, so, well, now let's see how the number works. Now, again, I'm making up numbers, right? I'm making up numbers because we are just doing examples right now. So let's say this is a 90s and regular 9 volt battery that we use as example in class all the time. Now, so you pick up 9 volt as a electron as when you go through this, right? So in the first customer, maybe, maybe you dropped, 
maybe you drop two votes. When you go through the next customer, maybe you drop three votes. Now think about it. So you have dropped a total of five votes of energy, which is you have data for five pizza. And how many do you have still have left? You still have four left, right? So that you, in order to make the number actually works out. So therefore, we can predict what happened to the third resistor, which is there will be exactly, in this case, four votes to drop in here. Okay, so negative four votes. Now, sometimes, uh, in order to make the math a little bit easier, we don't use the negative sign on the voltage drop. We just understand that it's voltage drop. So we will actually write something like this. I know without the negative, it looks a little weird. So we'll actually write something like this. We will say the total voltage that you gain should equal to the total voltage that you drop all combined together. So you can see just adding them together. Now, but of course we know it's not, this is not true if you actually keep the negative, right? But we will just remember that. So that means, you know, if you add nine volts and when you go for the battery, then the total amount of jobs should be nine volts. Okay, now voltage, I'm only putting them as negative because it's kind of like a voltage job. But when you're actually doing calculation, you don't have to put negative. So you can just say, well, this is nine volt. And on the first one, you drop two. And on the second one, you drop three. And on the third one, you drop four. So it makes sense, right? So they actually add up and the math works. And some use of these, one of those things are missing. So you're just looking for, for example, maybe V1 is missing and you're finding V1. And you would say voltage drop is two volts. You don't have to say voltage drop is negative two volts because the word voltage drop kind of, you know, imply that it is negative to begin with, right? Okay, so now uh, let's move on to the next thing because this is only for series circuit and what would happen to parallel circuit then? You know, we can't really stop in the middle. That's kind of weird. So in a parallel circuit, so works slightly differently, but actually easier, I think. So let's draw a parallel circuit. So this one is in parallel which we can draw a resistor one, a resistor two, and a resistor three. Okay, my drawing is there. All right, so resistor one, two, and three. Now, if you're gonna measure voltage, for example, the voltage job has to be measured in, well, this format. So you put a voltmeter here, to measure voltage drop one, volt meter here to measure voltage drop two, and volt meter this way to measure voltage drop three. Okay, so you measure voltage drop in here. And you can also put one in the, on the battery so you can measure voltage total. So the battery is always a total one. Okay, so that the battery is always measuring V total. Now, looking at that, remember we the actual split up, right? But even though they split up, they still carry the same amount of pizza though. So let's say, for example, if this is a nine volt battery, now think about a electron that only go through the first path. So think about electron that only go through the first path. So your job is to deliver pizza to this customer called R1, and that's your job. Well, you pick up nine pizza from the battery and then you deliver. Well, if you're running this first route, you only have one customer which is R1, so you have to drop all line pizza for that. So it will be nine votes. So you drop nine votes in R1. Okay, so technically negative, right? But we talk, we talk about that already. Sometimes we don't write that negative. Now, but you maybe you are a electron that has to walk the second path. So your job is to defer to the customer R2. Well, you pick up how many Pizza. Well, nine votes, that means you pick up nine pizza, and then you have to go to R2, and in your pathway, there's only one stop to make, so therefore, V2 is also nine votes, and by extension, I don't think I have to actually continue, R3 is also going to be nine votes. So the voltage difference, okay, potential difference, remember, it's just a fancy term for voltage, is the same. Okay, so it is the same across parallel resistors. Okay, so it's the same across parallel resistors. 
So that means V total is equal to V1, which is also equal to V2, which is also equal to V3. Okay, so we can make that conclusion. Now, last thing that we want to do, last, well, kind of like the last weapon that we want to acquire, is how do we deal with total resistance? Now, it turns out that Kirchhoff's law does not actually have a version for resistors, but, but we do have Ohm's law, and we can use Ohm's law and some logic to figure out the laws for series circuits, what happened to resistors, and for parallel circuits. So we will do series and parallel again. Now, so it turns out that for a series circuit, a circuit that's collected in series, we can combine resistor together like this. So let's say we started with three resistor, right? Okay, so we started with three resistor and they have a name R1, R2, and R3. Now, so we know that the Pizza Hut, the battery, is going to send out some resist, uh, some electron and the electron is going to be running around and delivering pizza, which is voltage to them. Now, but it turns out and it will have a current and we'll call that total current. And we know that this total current is the same everywhere, right? Because in a series circuit, uh, it's the same amount, no matter where you go. Now, but we also know that if we measure the voltage drop, the voltage drop will actually be adding up in this case, because you need to split the pizza between the three customer, since you actually have to go through all three houses. Now, so what happened is, let's say this is a nine volt battery again. So you pick up nine volt as you go through and let's look at the three resistor so let's say this resistor is well the first one has a drop of maybe two volt and the second one has a drop of maybe three volt and then the third one has a drop voltage drop or pizza drop <laughs> uh, as well i mean two three is five so i'm missing four in order to make the math actually works out okay so we know that already now but why am i writing this then well, because it turns out that this is exactly the same as if we combine all the resistor together into one giant one. And this giant resistor is going to help us actually calculate the total current. And the giant resistor will also just have a very simple voltage drop, which is 9 volts. So how do we calculate this giant equivalent resistor? So if we're going to use one resistor to replace all three of them, what would that number be? Well, it turns out in a series circuit, it's easy. Each resistor individually is like traffic jam. And if you have three traffic jam on a pathway, then you add those three traffic jam together. And that's your total amount of time spending in a traffic jam. That's how I think about it. So the total resistance of a circuit in series is literally adding all three traffic jam together. Now we haven't talked about resistors or resistance a lot. Now resistance is measured in ohms. So for example, let's say um, R1 is like 10 ohm. That means you have to wait 10 minutes to get through R1 traffic jam, right? And R2 is 20 ohm, which means you have to wait 20 minutes to get through R2. And R3 is 40 ohm. That means you have to wait 40 minutes to get through this last traffic jam. So our total is simply, in this analogy, the total amount of time that you have to wait in order to go through all three traffic jams one after another, which in this case will be 70 ohms. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So the total resistance in this circuit is 70 ohms because you have R1, R2, R3, each of them having those number. Okay. So in a series circuit, now we can conclude that the sum of all the resistance. So the total resistance in a series circuit is the sum of all the resistance individually, right? So all the individual resistance. So the more resistor you add in series, the more resistors you add in series, the larger the total resistance is because you have to go
go through all the traffic jam one by one. So your total waiting time is going to be longer than if you only have one or two traffic jam. Now, however, in a parallel circuit, so that's our last tool that we need to learn, is very different and sometimes is weird to explain this. So now let's look at three resistor, but this time let's only put two for now. So R1 and R2. Now we'll add the third one, so leave some space. We're not abandoning the third resistor. We are just starting with two, okay, starting with two. So now it turns out, so let's say the first resistor is, well, let's say 20 ohm. And the second resistor is 30 ohm. Now, what does that mean? That means a electron that goes through a p the first pathway. So let's say, for example, electron that go this way, have to wait 20 minutes to go through R1. While electron that goes through the second pathway has to wait 30 minutes to go through R2. Now, these are just examples, right? Now, but it's adding, so think about it. Do you think it will hurt or help the total resistance by adding a new pathway though? So now if you add a third resistor on it, do you think it will lower the total waiting time or do you think it's going to increase the total waiting time? One of, one of the way I think about this is I think about the bridges that collects Vancouver to Richmond. There are actually three separate bridges that collects Vancouver to Richmond. There is the Averling Bridge, there is another one called the Oak Street Bridge, and there's a third one called the Light Street Bridge, which is next to our school. Now, just imagine, before, let's say before the Light Street Bridge is open, compared to after it's open, what do you think? The total waiting time should actually decrease because you open a new pathway, right? And that's exactly what happened in here. Total resistance in a parallel circuit actually decreases when you open a new pathway because, well, at least you're giving people another way to go so that they, don't all ha they do not have to all trying to jam through the only pathway or the two pathway that you have. So for a parallel circuit, something really, really interesting happened. Now let's write it down in, in word. As more resistor are added, Okay, as more resistors are added in parallel, okay, the total resistance, the total resistance goes down. Okay, the more resistor you add in parallel, the more the total resistance actually go down. Now, it might be counterintuitive because we are adding traffic. How could that help overall traffic? But you have to think of adding things in parallel as in adding another bridge. Well, you're adding in another traffic jam, but at least you will have another way to go, which will spread out the traffic better, right? Now, let's do an ex uh, example. Now, let's fill in the last resistor, R3, with 10 ohm. Okay, so how do you calculate the total resistance in this one? Now the equation is actually kind of weird. Okay, so it's one over our total. Okay, one over our total equals to one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over R3. Now, and that's only because we have three resistor. If we have four, we'll just add a one over R4 to it. If we only have two, we don't have to write the last term. Okay, so how do you get this equation to work? Well. Now, let's try it on our example. So if these resistor is to be combined into one giant one, okay? So if we want to combine those three resistor in parallel into one giant one, then this giant resistor is gonna have a resistance of, now, so we try that calculation now. So how do we do that? So let's do this. So while well, we start with one over our total, which we don't know, equal to one over 20, plus one over 30, plus one over 10. Now, so these are all different denominators, so I would need a calculator to do that. Now, luckily, we do have a calculator, so let's let put that calculator in here. Now, so I'm going to do one over 20, plus one over 30, right, plus 
1 over 10. So I'm adding those three fractions together and I'm getting a, okay, 0.183. Okay, so 0.183. It's okay. We can deal with the decimal later on. So R total, 1 over R total is 0 0.183. Now, then what is R total? Well, we, then we have to do a reciprocal of that number, so which is 1 over 0 0.183. And we're going to use our calculator again. Right, so we can call back our calculator. So what if I do 1 over that answer? So I have a recall button on my calculator. I can actually do 1 over the answer, keeping all the decimal points. And let's look at the total. 5.5. .5. Let's run it to 5.5. .5. Our total is 5.5 ohms. Now, you look at this number, you have to put it in perspective when you, okay, look back at the question. Look back at the actual picture on the left. So, when you only have R1 as your pathway, you have to wait 20 minutes. Let's use the traffic jam as example again. Data frame pizza, it takes 20 minutes. If you only have bridge number two or two, you have to wait 30 minutes. If you only have bridge three, you have to wait 10 minutes to get through the traffic. Now, if I open all three links together, it turns out that the total wait time is now suddenly 5.5 minutes. And it makes sense because people can split up. Now, not only that the total is lower, the total is even lower than the lowest one that's in your parallel circuit. You realize that? The lowest number in your parallel circuit is actually 10 ohm. Look at that total. That total is 5.5. .5. So by introducing two extra pathway, you can, on average, people can get through this location in less time. Because even if you only have the third one, it only takes 10 minutes. How could having two more pathway take longer, right? Even though those two pathway might be really narrow, but you're still giving people another way to go. So only having R3 takes 10 minutes. Having two more pathway takes less than 10 minutes then, right? So when you think about it like that, it kind of makes sense. So to calculate this R total, we actually need to do it this way. So it's a one over reciprocal uh, so it's reciprocal of R total equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Okay, and the total resistance decreases. Okay, As the more parallel you add, the more it decreases. The more series you add, the more traffic you introduce. Okay, so we're going to take a break in here and we'll do two examples. Okay.